Let's shout about if anybody has a reason to shout. We do. Don't you know that we do? Oh, if anybody has a reason to shout, we do. Don't you know that we do? Oh, let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Let's shout about if anybody has a reason to shout. We do. Don't you know that we do? Oh, if anybody has a reason to shout, we do. Don't you know that we do? Oh, let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Let's shout about if anybody has a reason to shout. We do. Don't you know that we do? Oh, if anybody has a reason to shout, we do. Don't you know that we do? Oh, let's praise the Lord. Come on. Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Isn't it wonderful to praise the Lord? Scripture tells us that he is truly worthy. Worthy to be praised and uh, we're just thankful to have the opportunity uh, to praise him uh, on today and every day. Uh, uh, when, when God blesses us to see another day, that's a day uh, that we are indeed to praise the Lord. Uh, we thank God for the opportunities of life, uh, for the opportunity uh, that he is blessing us with uh, to be here today, uh, to be a part of our uh, worship contribution uh, today as we humble ourselves before the Almighty God, realizing uh, indeed that all of our sufficiency comes from the Lord. Uh, on this second Lord's Day of the month of August, we are thankful to uh, once again be addressing uh, our overall theme for the month of August uh, that deals with giving God our best in the home. Uh, to all of our visitors, we are thankful to God uh, for your presence here today. Uh, normally, uh, from month to month and year to year, uh, we operate on a uh, particular series of, of instruction. Uh, and you happen to be with us today uh, during this particular month when our theme is dealing with giving God our best in the home. Uh, so all of our lessons during this month will revolve around that particular area of concentration. I want to mention this morning that our uh, theme for the hour uh, deals with the subject, unless the Lord builds the house. Unless the Lord builds the house. Now, uh, we're looking, uh, our, our scripture passages that we're dealing with today will be coming from uh, the New King James uh, version of the scripture. Uh, if we were using the King James, it would have said, except the Lord. Uh, be of the house, but it simply means the very, very same thing. We're going to be looking at uh, two very short uh, uh, contextual settings. One, uh, one uh, Psalms 127, verses 1 and 2, and secondarily, uh, a sister passage uh, right next to that, uh, Psalm 128, uh, verses 1 through 4, uh, upon which we're going to build the theme, unless the Lord builds the house. Now, now before we get into that, we do, however... I want to share uh, with the family that, uh, and, and those that are visiting with us, that we want uh, to invite you to be back with us uh, on this evening uh, because we, we have a, a sort of a parallel uh, kind of lesson that is extremely, extremely important. And, and um, uh, we, uh, the lesson this morning as well as tonight, uh, specifically uh, has housed within it some specific uh, principles that all of our uh, couples, uh, particularly 
uh, uh, need to uh, understand and address, all of those that are moving uh, toward marriage and all of those that uh, have run into complications and situations and need some situations leveled out. Uh, on tonight, we're going to, uh, we're going to share uh, with the family um, a lesson that and it's, 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 a, it's a one word theme. I, I can't give you uh, that one word theme, but uh, it's a one word theme that we're going to utilize tonight uh, that indeed uh, stands as uh, an unmovable principle upon which uh, we should be building uh, our marriage foundation. And so uh, tonight, all we can do uh, is encourage the family uh, to be here, uh, to hear what uh, the Lord has to say. But it's, uh, it's just one word, and we're going to deal with that word. But I promise you, uh, the Holy Ghost guarantees that if we will apply that to our lives, our marriages, our relationships, our homes would indeed be a better place. Now, now all I can do this morning is encourage you, and, and, and I want to challenge you, uh, if you're wondering about that, come out and hear what the, what the Lord has to say. And if you do not leave here believing what I just said, then you'll have an opportunity to look me in the face and say, Brother Maria, you sure enough lied to us this morning. All right. Uh, and, and that will be fine. I will not be upset with you at all. I'll just take it with a smile and move right on. But I know what God has to say. And I know that this principle will be indeed an incredible blessing uh, for the rest of your life. So, so keep that in mind as we prepare uh, now to deal with what is at hand on this morning. We'd like to, uh, to read in your hearing uh, Psalms 127, uh, 1 and 2, Psalms 128, uh, 1 through 4, uh, as we move into the foundational premise that we're going to deal with this morning, uh, unless the Lord build the house. Psalms 127, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late. To eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Psalms 128, 1 through 4, blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. When you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy, and it shall be well with you. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house. Your children, like olive plants, all around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. We are told by our theologians and those that understand uh, uh, biblical Hebrew history, uh, that these uh, two psalms are actually, uh, when you look at Psalms 120 all the way through Psalm 134, uh, those are denoted as uh, the Psalms of Ascent. Uh, these were psalms that were written by the son of David, Solomon. Uh, these, uh, these are psalms uh, uh, that the family of God uh, sang in antiquity as God brought them out of Babylonian captivity and moved them back toward Jerusalem. These are uh, the psalms that, uh, that the family of God sang uh, as they matriculated uh, up the 15 uh, uh, column steps. Uh, that led up to uh, the holy place as uh, the priests ascended from down below, going up to do their service and duty unto God. These were uh, a part of the Psalms that uh, the children of God lifted up uh, in that time of worship as they elevated and they praised God for his glory, for his efficacy, and for the fact that he was indeed the very center of their lives. 
It is from um, a, a little bit of Psalm 127 and just a touch of Psalm 128 that we lift out of this particular contextual setting some very important principles that, that we know without a shadow of a doubt has the ability uh, to bless, to build up and keep our lives, our homes uh, and our families together. Uh, now, now, you see, we can stand uh, and say uh, words like, like, like we guarantee that, uh, that the principles that we share today will do that. And we can say that we can be that bold because we are proclaiming the word of God. Uh, we can be that bold because all that we say and all that we share is coming from God. It's, it's not coming from men. If it were coming from men, uh, we couldn't say that. But because it's the word of God, we can take it into our lives today. We can put it where it needs to be. We can allow it to change our disposition, change our mindset, and all that is within us and know that our lives are indeed going uh, to be blessed. Our brothers and sisters and, and visiting friends, uh, our, our relationship with God is absolutely no good uh, unless we allow the word of God to change us from who and what we are to who and what God would have us to be. My being baptized into Christ and becoming a Christian is meaningless if I'm going to wrestle and fight God to stay who I've always been, to have the same mindset that I've always had, uh, to, to make the same decisions by the same standards uh, that I've always made. I'm not going to become uh, what God would have me to be unless I humble myself and give it all to the master. And that's what, we're, that's what we're calling on God's family to do today. This is not about the word of men. This is not about me. This is not about the brethren. It's not about anything but being about the almighty God. And we pray today that we will open up and allow God uh, indeed to have uh, his way. When we look at these particular Psalms, uh, uh, 127 and 128, as I said, it was a, a collection of that was a part of 15 uh, uh, particular Psalms. And every time uh, the priest would go up to that next level, uh, they would change the Psalm and the next level. And, and they would sing these all the way up until they got to the place of ministry. One of the reasons that that they sang these psalms coming out of Babylon uh, is because of the fact that, that these psalms uh, reminded the people of God of a very important principle. And as we, we prepare uh, to, 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 to lay uh, these principles before us, we, we want to be reminded today as these psalms reminded the people of God uh, in, in yesterday to get our minds set where it needs to be. You see, when God's people were coming out of Babylonian captivity, uh, they, they, they ended up there uh, out of their own doing. You, you, you see, they, 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 were, they, were, they went into Babylonian captivity because they refused uh, to listen to God because they refused to obey God, uh, because they, 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 they fell uh, for, for the gimmick of the, of the gods around them, and they neglected the one true God and ran after gods that had no power. And so, and so we bring that up uh, because this morning uh, many of our homes are in trouble. And believe me, they are in trouble by our own doing. Many of our children are in trouble, and they are in trouble by their own doing and by our, our shortcomings and, and, and the things that, that we have decided that we could build our houses on the principle of grandmother and granddad, and, and that didn't work. 
Uh, we've decided that, 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 that we're grown and, and we understand and we know what to do and, and how to do it and therefore uh, we, we take what part of God's word that, that works for us and we neglect the part that we have to change uh, in order to be what God would have us to be. And we, we, we're in a lot of trouble. And I say we because I'm a part of you and you are a part of me. And I know you and you know me. And we all are, have troubles uh, in the midst of our homes. We all have troubles in the midst of our relationships. And, and I don't care where we go. It doesn't matter what congregation we go to. It doesn't matter what building we go into. If there are human beings in there, uh, what I just said fits everywhere. It doesn't matter the color. It fits everywhere. It doesn't matter the economic status. It, it, it's, it's the same uh, everywhere because we're all human beings uh, and we've got, we've got struggles at hand. Now, I say that to say this, that, that when the children of God, as they were coming out of Babylon, they were moving, uh, and these songs helped them to understand that God only wants the best for them. And, 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 and this is the foundation that we want to operate from, that every principle that we discuss today is only because God wants the best for us. The only reason we're dealing with this series is because God wants the best for our homes. He wants the best for our families. He wants the best for our husbands and wives. He wants the best for our single family homes. He wants the very best for our children. That's the only reason uh, we're here. That's the only reason we're in this assembly. That's the only reason that we're concerned about seats that, em that are empty because somebody will be missing uh, some blessings today that they could have gotten uh, if they had just been here. In the midst of this, we want to first of all uh, listen to what God told these children of his in, in Jeremiah 11 because as they were, they were under duress, uh, they were under the, 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 the penalty for their sins. They, they were paying for all of their mistakes. And it was tough because of their spirit toward God. And so God said, Jeremiah, go tell my people something for me. He said in Jeremiah 29, 11, God says to the people, he says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call up on me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. You see, you see God is saying to his people, I want the best for you. Anytime we're in Bible class, we should know God is trying to say to us, I want the best for you. Anytime we are in a worship, anytime we open the word of God, uh, God is saying that I want the best for you. And I want us to understand today that as we deal with these principles and then and, 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 and some of them might go against our grain. Well, when, when, when a principle of God goes against your grain, uh, just shake it off and let it come on in. Because God is saying, hey, if you'll make the adjustment according to what I instruct, life is going to be better for you. I hear the Apostle Paul in the New Testament, in Romans the 8th division, he, he again trying to give us comfort in knowing that God wants the best for us. He says to the people of God in Romans 8 and 31, he says, he says, he says what then shall we say to these things if God is for us? Who can be against us? Paul wants the church to know that God is for you. He's for our family. He's for our children. He doesn't want our boys and girls incarcerated. That's why he's given us the word and he's given us the church. He doesn't want our homes all broken up. That's why he's given us the word. That's why he's given us the church. That's why he's filled us with the Holy Spirit. He says, now, Paul says, now, let me give you a proof text to this. In verse 32, Paul says, he, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for who? For us all, not for some of us, not for the elite of us. You, you see, you see, but, but for all of us, he says, 
He says, now, 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 when we see this, but delivering him up for, for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us what? All things. You see, you see, you see, you see, God wants us blessed. You see, you see, God enjoys, uh, just like we do, blessing our children. But the difference between God and us, uh, God's riches never run out. But we as parents on the earth, we are always what? Limited. And when we look at this situation and let the Lord speak, uh, God wants us to understand today that the truth of the matter is the Lord wants to fix and change the conditions of our homes. He wants to fix and change the conditions of our relationships. He don't want us just living under the same roof, but he wants us to really live. He wants us to have rich relationships. He wants us to be able to find joy in him and joy in one another. He wants us to be able to stand back and say as parents, Lord, my children have been a blessing. He wants our children to be able to look him in the face and say, Lord, I thank you for parents who are indeed uh, in uh, the Lord. When we look at this situation today, very quickly, very quickly, we want to move uh, with that particular understanding and hear the divine principles of God that has the ability to help us to understand uh, that some things can only be done uh, one way. And when it comes to the home, when it comes uh, to, to, to real living, uh, if God doesn't build it, it's not going to last very long. When we look at the principles of the scripture, uh, principle number one is that, is that the Lord built house. We're talking about if the Lord built the house. You see, you see, in the Lord built house, it is the, the foundation of that house is rooted uh, in the fear of uh, God. It's rooted in the fear of uh, the Lord. Uh, let, 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 let's understand uh, what the Bible has to say. In Psalms uh, 128 and 1, uh, the Bible says, Blessed uh, is everyone uh, who fears the Lord. Blessed is everyone uh, that fears the Lord. We must understand uh, that Christian are non-Christian. Let me say that again. Uh, that Christian uh, or non-Christian. When a Christian uh, applies, uh, when a Christian fears the Lord, uh, it brings about blessings. When a Christian uh, takes the Lord for granted and do their own thing, uh, it's, it's just like not being a Christian at all. Uh, we, 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 uh, we, we cut our very own uh, blessings. When a non-Christian apply, apply uh, in their household the principles of Scripture, those principles bring blessings uh, into that non-Christian household. That non-Christian can't make heaven their home. That non-Christian cannot receive forgiveness of sins, but that non-Christian household can be blessed for every principle that is established in that household from the word of the Almighty God. When we look at this situation, notice what the Bible says. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. Our statement this morning is for the child of God not to give away the power of blessings to a world that doesn't know God because we decide that we're going to do it our way. When we use the, the, the terminology of fear, uh, this term fear here, uh, 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 it, it begins, it begins with, with actual fright. That's where it starts. That's not the maturity of fear. The maturity of fear uh, deals with reverence. It deals with, a, with, a, with an insatiable desire to please. The Lord Jesus said, I do always those things that what? That please the Father. Jesus said, my whole life, it's founded on what can I do next that will please my father. 
And so, and so, and so, a man who, who fear God understand that God doesn't play. Men that fear God understand that there is a penalty for sin. Uh, that, that every action, there's going to be a reaction, and we need to decide what type of reactions uh, we want in the midst of our life. The Bible in the Old Testament in Psalms uh, 33, and they put it this way, uh, uh, David says, let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Uh, so, 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 so this, this, this setting uh, of fear uh, uh, starts as God uh, set up Israel at Mount Sinai uh, when there was lightning and thunder and billowing and the shaking of the mountain. Uh, that put godly fright in them. But godly fright will not carry us through life. Uh, that's where it starts, but you see. Uh, but as we begin to develop that relationship with God, we reverence him. And what fright could not do, reverence will indeed see us through. Uh, Jesus, with that contextual setting in mind in Matthew chapter 10, uh, when, when Jesus was talking to the people of his day, realizing and understand that, that humanity has always been under peer pressure and humanity has always, somebody has always been under the thumb of another. And Jesus trying to help them understand that there's only one divine thumb that we should stay under and we don't have to worry about being under the thumb of anybody else. When he says in Matthew 10, 27 and following, the Bible says in the, in the 27th verse, he, the Bible says, whatever I tell you in the dark, speaking to his disciples, I speak in the light. And what you hear in the ear, he says, preach on the housetops and do not fear those who kill the body, uh, but cannot kill the soul. Jesus said, let me, let me give you a standard. So you, you don't be scared of men. Uh, you, 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 you don't allow men to cause you not to obey God. You don't allow uh, situations to cause you not to be obedient to God. He's saying you got to get your fear and your priorities straight. He says, and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him uh, who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. We live in a world and a society where people around us have more influence over us than the God who sits up in heaven. We're more concerned with what somebody is going to say or what somebody is going to think until Paul has to say, don't be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. We find, brothers and sisters, that the problem in the world and in many of our homes is the lack of fear of uh, the Lord. You see, you see, I'm not fearing God when I decide I do what I want to do with my body. And I do what I want to do with my time. I look at what I want to look at. I listen to what I want to listen. I go where I want to go. I come when I please. I give when I please. And, and all of that is left up to me. Uh, you see, I have that disposition uh, because I am not a, 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 a proper God uh, fearer. It is because of men not, not fearing God, not reverencing God, not giving God uh, the credit that he is due that, that causes us to live lives uh, that are destructive to ourselves uh, and destructive to one another. The Bible has this to say in Romans chapter 3 uh, that helps us to understand the importance of, of what happens when we don't fear, when we don't fear God. In the Romans 3, the Apostle Paul, writing to the church at Rome, speaking about what the Holy Spirit said about men, even in antiquity. In Romans 3, 10 and following, the Bible says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are, are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. 
Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the ways of peace have they not known. Now watch what verse 18 says. There is no fear of God before their eyes. When men don't fear God, we do whatever is right in our own eyes. That, 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 that's why you never know when you're going to leave home and come back and have an empty house. You never know when you're going to park your car and come back and there's an empty space. Or all of your wheels are gone and your vehicle sitting down flat on the ground. You never know because that's the world that we live in. We understand that in the world, but it shouldn't be in the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are children of God. We have been baptized into Christ. Why were we baptized? We were baptized because we realized it was time to change Lord. We realized we had served the devil and we were serving the devil and we were headed to a devil's hell. But we wanted to come to God where there was life, where there was liberty, where there was assurance and power before him. Why come there and still walk by our old way? The Bible says, unless the Lord builds a house, the, 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 the house that the Lord builds is one where, where God is feared in that house. Uh, secondarily, uh, something very important takes place here. You see, in Psalm 128 and 1, not only does the Bible say that, uh, that one is, is, is everyone is blessed, that fears God, but that second layer, that, that is extremely important. You see, you see, when we fear God, we then, it causes us to walk in his ways. You see, that's why we said in the beginning, a Christian home is not simply a home or a house where, where, where there are baptized believers, are Christians living under the roof. You see, that by itself doesn't make a Christian home. You see, because a Christian home is a, is a, is a, is a domain where God is feared, and what comes out of that fear is a lifestyle that is based on uh, the principles uh, of the Almighty God. In other words, in other words, there, there is a, a standard of obedience to the word uh, of God. You see, when a worldly home becomes a Christian home, it goes through a whole transition. You see, when that worldly home with mom, dad, and the kids becomes a Christian home, things change up in there. Daddy don't talk to mama like he used to because he's a Christian man now. You see, you see, you see, a mama don't call a dad the way she used to. Because she's a Christian woman now. Children don't sass their mom and dad and try to put her in her place anymore because it's a Christian home now. If that's not the case, there are, there are Christians in the home, but you still don't have a, a Christian home. There has to be a, a, a obedience. There has to be a willingness to walk in the ways of God. Walking in the ways of God changes everything. Walking in the ways of God changes everything. Our speech change, our disposition change, our conversation uh, from, from our lips change, our perceptions of life, all of that changes because we are translated from darkness to light. It all changes. When, the, when, when Paul was talking to, 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 the, to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, when he talked about the fact that those are in, uh, are in Christ are, are, what, are new creatures, a new creation, old things have passed away, behold, all things become new. That was a, that, that's a spiritual reality. That, that, that's a reality. Those are not just words. The, the Bible doesn't contain just words. The Bible is the word of God. It is all reality. It is all spirit. It is all life. 
This is the way Paul uh, put it uh, to the Ephesian church. Go with me very quickly to Ephesians chapter 3. You see, you see, the point here, the point here is that, is that the house that the Lord builds, number one, is a house where there is fear of the Lord in the house. God is feared, he is reverence. Our daily walk is in awe of the mightiness and the goodness of God. Secondarily, the fruit that comes out of that is that our lifestyle change because we humble ourselves and we become obedient to light. The Bible says in Ephesians 3, 8 and following, Paul says to the, to the, to the church, he says, for you were once darkness. In other words, he's saying you, you used to be darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Then what, what's his next statement, you see? He says what? Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out, he said, he says, finding out uh, what, is it, what is acceptable to God and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. You see, we're through with that. But rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. And so Paul says, now, now based on those principles, catch this. He said, verse 15, see then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Doing what, Paul? Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. You see, you see, you see that, 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 that house that is built on uh, the principles of the Lord is a, is a house where those, uh, those in the house are those who are walking with an understanding uh, of what the will of God is. As we know the will of God, our lives are changed to walk by the will of God. Well, what, 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 what is the will of God? You see, when we look at this, God's will is given to us according to his word. Uh, you see, you see, you see, you see, now that we're children of God, our, our marriage principles, our family principles, our development principles are based on uh, what the says the Lord and not based on Reader's Digest or magazines or, or, or Hollywood or, or Dr. Ruth or Dr. Phil or, or Dr. Oprah or whoever it might be. You see, in looking at this, what, what are you saying? Well, you see, when I look at Ephesians 6, when I look at Ephesians 6, I understand that God gives us principles uh, upon which our, our homes uh, are to be built. First of all, Romans 6, 1 through 4 says to the children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. In the home that the Lord builds, there are children uh, that, that obey their parents. There are, there, are, there are boys in that house that are 6'2", 285 pounds, that's, that are saying yes, ma'am, to a mother that's, that's 5'1", and weighs 135. And, and, and he's doing that because God has taught him uh, the principle of being obedient to your parents, mom and dad. Got nothing to do with how heavy his voice is. Has nothing to do with how many quarterbacks he sacked last year. The principle is the word of God and not the mind of man. The, you see, the Bible says to the children, honor your father. Honor your mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. These are children that live by the promises of the almighty God. And then he speaks to the fathers when he says, do not provoke. Your children to wrath. Understand how to handle them to keep them close to your bosom. And don't just push them out there to the dogs in the street. 
we find the Bible says, he says to, to them, but bring them up in the training and admonition of, of the Lord. That means we have to take them by the hand. We just can't send them to Bible class. We got to take them to Bible class. We just can't send them to worship. They have to go to worship with us. We are to set the example. We are responsible, responsible parents because we are Christian parents. Bible says in Ephesians 5, we can't tell this out of the Bible. Even Church of Christ, our husbands and wives, this is for us. The Bible says in Ephesians 5, 22, wives, uh, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. We know that's not politically correct in the world, but this is the word of God. This is the pattern for the children of God. You see, if the Lord is building the house, then you will find submissive wives in the house to the husband. And then uh, the word of God gets the husband's mind straight. When it says, for the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church. He's the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. And then God say, husband, this is God's will for you. What is it, Lord, that you want? Love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. You see, it's, you see, husbands, we can't simply demand that wives obey part of the scripture and we do whatever we want to with the rest. God demands uh, uh, that the Christian wife adjust her thinking, adjust her mindset, adjust her principles to what thus saith the Lord, and he demands that the Christian husband do the same thing. You see, you see, you see, that's the challenge. You see, we, we want to use the scripture for us because, because there's always that, that power struggle. You know, you know, there's always that competition. There's always a challenge. There is no competition in the house that the Lord builds because the Lord is the head of that house. And there was a husband that, that humbles himself to the principles of God, a wife that humbles herself to the principles of God uh, to find out that that will work. The struggle happens. When men decide to take advantage of what the Bible has said to the woman. And women decide to take advantage of what God has said to the man. And brothers and sisters that, that, and visiting friends, that competition should not exist. All of us have to strive to be all that God has called us to be. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, I'm just going to hit one more area because some of this was, de de was designated uh, for our couples. And in 1 Corinthians 7, uh, 1 through 5, we don't, we don't talk about this uh, very much, but this is extremely important in the household. The Apostle Paul writing to the, to, the, to the Corinthian church about questions that they had written to him about. Paul is answering some of the questions that they had asked him about in the letter. Uh, Paul says uh, concerning uh, a number of principles of marriage in 1 Corinthians 7, 1 through 4, 1 and following, Paul says, now concerning the things of which you wrote to me, he said, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, he says, let each man have his own wife and let each woman have her own husband. Then he says to them, he says, let the husband render to his wife the affection to her. And likewise also the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And, and, and likewise the husband has, uh, does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another except with consent. For a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again so that Satan 
so that Satan, so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. You, 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 you see, th these, are, these are, are the principles upon which our, our the, 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 the house that the Lord builds uh, happens to be built because God knows us. And the Lord knows the devil, you see. And we do some wicked things uh, with, our, with our bodies to each other. We do wicked things to each other with our tongue. We do wicked things to each other uh, in damaging uh, uh, each other's emotions and so forth. And that ought not to be. You see, when, when, when God is feared in the house, that stuff is corrected as soon as God speaks. God speaks, it's corrected. Turn the page. Let's move on with our lives. And thirdly, thirdly, we want to, to mention today that, that not only is the house that, that the Lord builds rooted in the fear of the Lord, not only is it, is it, is it rooted uh, in, in the ways of the Lord, but secondarily, it is rooted uh, in, in a faith, in a, in, in a faith uh, that, that is rooted in the provision and the protection uh, of the Lord. I, I, just, I, just, I just love what, 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 what the Bible has to say. It's interesting that in both Psalms 127, uh, uh, 2 and Psalms 128, 2, uh, God gives us a, a, a very, uh, makes a very important point. In Psalms 127, 2, the Spirit says, it is vain for you. He says, it is vain for you to rise early to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow, for so he gives his beloved sleep. And then in 128.2, he says, when you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy, and it shall be well with you. Sounds like a contradiction, but it's not a contradiction. What the Bible says in, in Psalms 127.2, he says it doesn't matter how hard you work, doesn't matter how hard you labor, doesn't matter what you have at the bank. He said none of it means anything at all if you're not right with God. If you're not living a life that fears God, if you're not living a life that, that's walking according to the ways of God, all of your work and all your labor means absolutely nothing. Don't let anybody run away from here and say, Brother Rare preached this morning, I don't need to go to work no more. <laughs> you know, I don't need no job no more. I'm dependent. That's not what the Bible says. You see, the Bible says to do that, to labor, to be stressed out, to work 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 hours a week and still can't bring it all together because we're doing it on our own doesn't make any sense. He said it's vanity. It's no good. You're killing yourself for nothing. That's what he says. And then when he goes to 128 and 2, you see the man who does it the right way is a happy fellow. That's all, that, that's all he's saying. Jesus put it this way in Matthew 6, 31. He said, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added indeed unto you. That's what it's all about. In antiquity, the spirit of God spoke in Proverbs 3, 5. The Bible said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledging him, he shall direct your path. He said, do not be wise in your own eyes, but rather fear the Lord. Depart from evil. It will be help to your flesh, strength to your bone. Then he says in verse 9, honor. He says, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruit of your increase so your bonds will be filled with plenty, your vats will overflow with new wine. When we give God what's due him, he gives us continually a lot more than what's due us. Brothers and sisters, the Bible is helping us this morning to understand that, that, that unless the Lord builds the house, the builder is building in vain. The one who is set up to guard it is guarding in vain. And the one that's set up for its provision is providing provision in vain. It just doesn't work. The, the Bible is helping us this morning to understand that every now and then you come across something that can only be done 
one way. And building, building a home that lasts. Building a life that lasts. Uh, building, building a, a, a career, a character uh, that, that, will la- that will stand the test of time. We must be people that fear God. We must be people that walk in the ways of God. We must be people, we work and labor, but all of our work, all of our labor, all of our strategizing is unto God and not unto men. And when it's that way, we have no problem giving God his due. And God has no problem blessing us indeed beyond measure. Brothers and sisters and visiting friends, isn't it time that we stop majoring in vanity and start majoring in blessing? When we're walking without fear of God, when when we're walking in our own ways and not his ways, when we're locked into making it all by ourselves, by our principles and our way, God is saying you're wasting your time. There are people everywhere having babies, adding to the numbers under the roof. And it's all vanity. Men, women, and children trying to be a life their way, according to Hollywood, according to the streets, according to the principles of men. And, the, and they're blowing up and following and falling each and every day. Over 50% of every marriage in America ends in divorce. In divorce. There are men marrying men. Women marrying women. People who practice homosexual lifestyle, adopting children to raise in that house, in that environment. God says it's vain. It's not going to work. It will never work. There can't be strength. There can't be success. Even if humanity and their wisdom can see it, God has already spoken it. And what God has spoken, we can book it. But then, in the midst of it all, brothers and sisters, we must take advantage of what God has given. We have an opportunity to know God's word. Let us not be like those who who are ignorant of the word of God. They're, They're living the way they live because they don't know any better. We know better because we're students of the word of God. We know better. Because we, we, we've come to God and we, we've gotten off of the throne and we said, Lord, Lord, I'm selling out to you. You see, you see, you see, we are without excuse because within us there exists the Holy Spirit that, that, that opens up, that leads, that guides and, and, and allows us to understand what God is speaking. Paul says that the word is spiritual and it takes the spiritual to grasp it, and the Spirit of God that is within us gives us the ability to know and understand what God is saying in the midst of our lives. Let us decide today to stop majoring in vanity. It's not going to work. We can't let the streets raise our children. We cannot let the schools rear our children. We cannot let Hollywood and, and the artists and the, and the rappers and, and the sports industry, we cannot allow all of those entities that are full of nothing but distractions to our lives to rear our children and to base the principles of our marriages and, and relationships on on that which comes from uh, the world. James says we got to use the right wisdom. There's a wisdom that comes from below and there's a wisdom that comes from above. The wi- wisdom that comes from above uh, is the word uh, of the almighty God. God's word will without a doubt change and bless all of our lives. Most of us here today, we, 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 we're on the right track. We're where we need to be. Because, because we, there was a day in our lives when we heard the gospel. 
the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We believe you with all of our heart, soul, and strength. We repented of our sins. We confess Jesus Christ as the Son of God, and we were baptized into Christ for the remission of our sins. It was there that day, that time, that situation based on that obedience that we became children of the Almighty God. When the Holy Spirit turned the lights of understanding on, when we were empowered to be exactly what God have called us to be, and Satan and the hounds of hell cannot change that, all we've got to do is humble ourselves unto God, walk every day by the principles of the scripture, and when life is no more, go on and be able to make heaven our home. Let us not lose that opportunity. Let us not continue to major in vanity, but let's major in blessing by, by, by humbling ourselves and fearing God, by stepping away from the principles of our own human philosophy and from the world and humble ourselves to the word of God, by, be, by realizing and understanding that it's only through him that we live, we move, and have our very being, and not of we ourselves. Not of we ourselves. Give our lives and our hearts to God. If we've come to God and step back out in the world, God says, repent. Turn and come on back to me. If you're not a child of God you will, and you want to obey the truth, to be a child of God, to be able to receive those spiritual things from God that only his children can receive. Put yourself in the position of blessing where only the covenant children of God can receive. We ask you today, let God, who's building your house right now? Who do you fear? Whose ways are you walking in? Where do you base this morning your sufficiency? Let's stop today majoring in vanity and let's start majoring in the blessing, God is in the blessing business. But the walls that we allow Satan to, to help us put up, so many blessings are being blocked today. Let's take the walls down by having a repentant heart and coming to God. Let's take the walls down by walking down the aisle and giving God our lives by believing in the gospel with all of our heart, soul, and strength, repenting of our sins, confessing Jesus Christ as the Son of God, and allowing a man to baptize us in water that we can receive remission of all of our sins and become a child of God today. Who's building your house? Our advice is to let God build your life. Let God build your home because the Bible says unless and except the Lord build we who are building guarding and providing it's all being done in vain wouldn't it be a tragedy to have lived through all of this life and when we get to the end it would have all been in vain and to be in vain it means it's empty it's worthless. It's, it's, it's a life that could have just been not even lived at all. Is what God is saying. He's saying, I don't want you to go there. Come out of that, he says, and come to me as we stand to sing the song of invitation at this hour. Why not come today? Why not come even right now? There's a fountain free. Oh, we thank God for the fountain today. And me. We thank him today. Let us haste. Oh, oh, would you haste this morning? To his spring. Will you come today? Tis the fountain of love. Except the Lord build the house. Let us not labor in vain. Let us not build in vain. Let us not provide in vain. Will you come today? Will you come? Will you give the Lord? Give the Lord the opportunity to be a blessing. Will you come and give him an opportunity? To really be a blesser, a blesser in our lives.
Someone said, thirsty, thirsty, thirsty soul. Thirsty souls, why, why don't you come on? Will you hear today that welcome? God has a welcome call. Tis a fountain. Open. Oh, will you come? Will you come today? Brother and sister and visiting friends, we, we trust, we hope, and pray that the three principles that we shared this morning uh, will we'll, we'll have a hold into the midst of our lives and that we can repeat this to our spouses and to our children and, and those around us how important it is to live our lives in the fear of God, to live our lives walking in his way and understanding that our provision and protection comes from the Lord. The bars won't keep the criminals out. Won't do it. A rabbit's foot won't keep the storm from coming. But God, God will keep the city safe. And when destruction comes, he'll give us the power to continue on. May God bless and keep you. And again, we want to encourage you uh, to come back tonight uh, for a life-changing principle that we promise, if we will obey it, will make a mighty, mighty difference in the midst of your lives. May God bless, may God keep you. Brother Sam.